Hey guys, my name is Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. You are about to watch a full length workout from my online members area here free on YouTube so you can check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. I encourage you to check out some of the links in the description if you want to learn more about Manflow Yoga or if you want to get started with a free beginners program. I have a seven day intro uh, which is free, no credit card required and it's an awesome way to get started in just about 15 minutes per day. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. We put out tons of workouts and content every week and I hope you enjoy this workout. Be sure to like it. Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Man Flow Yoga. The workout we're going through today is going to be a beginner friendly, so no flexibility required workout focused on your hip mobility and your shoulder mobility. We're going to be using two blocks and a strap today. Those are just the best tools that we can use, especially if you're inflexible. Um, if you don't have two blocks, you can use a stack of books. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt or a rope or a dog leash or anything like that. Um, and then just a quick note, these Manful Yoga Cork Yoga mats, if you don't already have one, these are available on Amazon, but we just launched them in the UK as well. So if you're in the United Kingdom, they are also available uh, in, uh, on amazon.co.uk. So check that out. And uh, if you want to learn more about the mat, go to the website. I won't spend too much time talking about it in this video. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to get started on your back with some hip work. So start off lying down on your back. Bring your feet in toward your butt. Press down through your feet. Knees are going to be directly above your heels. Relax your back onto the ground. Relax your neck down. And from here, we're going to push up into a bridge. So pull your shoulders forward using your feet. So just pull a little bit. Feel the backs of your thighs engaged. And then using your hip strength, Press down through your feet, squeeze your butt, and lift your hips away from the ground. It's actually more like pushing your hips away from the ground. If you think about lifting your hips, then that tends to, you might incorporate your lower back a little bit more. So think about pushing your hips off the ground using your feet. And if you notice that your knees are flaring out, I want you to make sure that your knees are staying toward one another so your, sh your thighs are parallel to one another. And again, we're putting the weight here in your glutes. Arms are relaxed along your sides and head and neck are down. So as you're doing this, you're going to feel your hips are working, the backs of your thighs, backs of your hips are working, your glutes, your hamstrings are working. You're going to feel your thighs working here. Abs should be working. You should feel a little bit of tightness through your core and your lower back, your erector spinae, those muscles on either side of your spine, those should also be engaged. But you just want those, you just don't want to feel those muscles working in overdrive. It should be a nice spread through your hips, your core, and your back. We're going to do two more breaths here. Drive up a little bit higher if you can. Again, squeezing your butt. It helps to think squeezing a penny between your butt cheeks. And breathing is slow and controlled. One more breath here. All right, and then go ahead and slowly release down. From here, I'm going to have you grab the tops of your knees, pull them in toward your shoulders, and just kind of lightly roll from side to side here, releasing your lower back if you had any kind of tension from that arch in your spine, and just countering what we just did. All right. And then from here, let's go ahead and roll over and flip onto your chest. And we're going to go through a little more hip work, a little more shoulder work. We're going to start off in somewhat of a child's pose. So I want you to get your butt back as far as you can. So hips coming back toward your heels. If you notice that you have knee pain, if it hurts your knee to bend or flex your, your knees that much, then don't go as far back with your hips. Just go back as far as comfortable. If you're wondering about that knee pain, it will get better as you strengthen your hips. And then from here, walk your arms out in front of you. Make sure that your arms are straight. Flex your forearms, your biceps, your triceps, and then release your head down. Now, if you notice that your back is way off the ground and you don't quite have a flat back, grab the blocks and you're going to put your hands on top of, on the tops of those blocks and your head might actually kind of hover off the ground here and that's normal and that's fine. So we're using the blocks to work a little bit deeper into your shoulders 
and this way you can keep your back flat. And if you want, if you still have kind of that pain in the knees, maybe you walk the blocks forward a little bit and you bring your hips a little further off the ground. You might also feel some stretching through your hips, through your groin here, and that's normal. A couple more breaths. And the goal is getting your hips back toward your heels as long as that doesn't hurt. All right. And then from here, I want you to lift one hand off the ground. So let's go ahead and lift your left arm off the ground first. Just about 10 seconds here. Squeeze it up as high as you can. A little higher, five seconds. And you're going to feel this in your shoulder blade. Three, two, one. Release your left hand down. Keep your head relaxed. Lift your right arm off the block as high as you can. So you're going to feel strengthening through your left shoulder, building stability there. And then also squeezing that right arm up, you're going to feel the shoulder blade muscles working. Three, two, one. Release. All right. Nice job. From here, we're going to move into a runner's lunge. So this is a really basic lunge, but so good for your hips. Now, if you step your right foot up between the blocks, left leg kind of stays where it is. Push down through your right foot so you feel your right glute working, your hips working, the muscles that we were using in that bridge. And then keep your chest upright. And then go ahead and tuck your back toes, lift your knee, taking it into a runner's lunge. Using the blocks here, this is going to help you put a little bit of weight into the blocks so you don't have to put all of the weight in your lower body. But it's also going to help you keep your back flat. So instead of rounding your back, kind of making a C shape with the spine, we're able to pull the chest forward and up and keep a straighter spine here. So I want you to think pulling your chest forward and up, not arching the back, keeping your chin relaxed toward your throat, and then lightly squeeze your legs toward one another. So the right foot squeezes toward the back and the left foot squeezes forward. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more here, you can bring your fingertips to the blocks. So putting a little less weight uh, in your upper body, putting it more in the lower body. And then really squeeze your back thigh so your knee lifts. One more breath here. And this is challenging. If you need to take a break, it's okay. And then go ahead and slowly, slowly, slowly release that left knee to the ground. Keep the weight in your right hip. So make sure that you're not uh, dumping all of that weight into the left knee. And then bring your block back so it's on the right side of your hip. Extend your left arm up and then lean toward your right. So we're kind of getting a banana shape with your upper body here. Lifting your chest upward. Still continuing to squeeze both hips here so the legs squeeze toward one another. I'm really driving down through my right foot here and I'm actually squeezing my left glute too. So all those muscles we were working in that bridge at the beginning, you should feel those muscles working in this low lunge with a side stretch. Really press your fingertips up and over and also squeeze your arms back. So you want to feel those muscles we were working in that child's pose with your arms lifted off the ground as you squeeze the arms back. One more breath here. All right, go ahead and release. Bring your blocks back to where they were before and go ahead and switch sides. So left foot is going to step up, right leg stays where it is. <coughs> Knee is over the ankle and the front foot. Push down really hard through your left foot so you should feel your left glute, your thigh, your hip engage as you push down through that foot. Tuck your back toes and then squeeze your back thigh, lift the knee, pull your chest forward and up. And as you do this, you're going to feel a stretch through the front of your right hip. So your hip flexors are going to be stretching. You might also feel some stretching through the left inner thigh if you're tight. And then we want to feel the muscles in the hips and your glutes and your quadriceps are also engaging here. So strengthening and stretching. Squeeze your legs toward one another. My back foot squeezes forward. My front foot squeezes back. And again, the chest lifts forward and up. You can put as much weight as you'd like in the blocks. If you want to make it more challenging, 
bring your fingertips up so that your fingertips are on the blocks, less weight in your upper body, more in your lower body. And if this is too easy for you, you can bring your feet further apart and that's going to help you get a deeper stretch. It's also going to challenge your strength and endurance a little bit more. Take one more breath here. Make sure you're squeezing both hips. And then slowly release that left knee down. Keep the weight in the hips. Don't dump all your weight into your right knee. If you do have sensitivity in the, in the knee there, you can put a cushion or you can put um, a pillow or even a knee pad under your right knee. And then go ahead and move the left or move the block back so it's outside your left hip. Lightly rest your hand on that block. Bring your right arm up. Reach up and over to the left. And you're welcome to stack blocks here. If you'd prefer to use two blocks here, you're welcome to do that. That's an option. Use the, uh, use the props that you have to make the pose work for you. Don't necessarily copy me exactly, exactly my depth. You want to do the pose in a way that gets you the benefit, the intended benefit, and not just mirror somebody else. So as I'm in this low lunge, I'm still pushing down through my front foot. My legs are squeezing toward one another. My right arm is pressing up and over to the left. I'm staying nice and tall through my lunge. Two more breaths. Make sure you're squeezing your right glute here. So if you don't have that muscle awareness yet, keep working on it. That body awareness, that muscle awareness or muscle engagement will come with time and focus. All right, and then let's go ahead and release. From here, we're gonna move up to a standing position and I'm gonna have you grab a strap as you go. All right, so hips are pretty warm now. I'm gonna have you stand with your feet about six inches apart. If you have the block still, put that block between your thighs and we're gonna work on your inner thigh engagement and hip strength and core strength as we work on your shoulders. So hug the block between your thighs, push down through your feet, keep your butt under your torso, make sure that your butt isn't poking out behind you. Also make sure that you're not leaning forward and you feel the weight in your toes, evenly distributed body weight. Bring the strap behind your back. This time we're gonna have the palms facing your body. So hold the strap with the palms facing your body. Rotate your shoulders open, shoulder blades pull toward one another, chest is big and proud. And then squeeze the elbows toward one another as much as you can. You might feel a little bit of popping in the shoulders. That's normal. And then see if you can lift your arms away from your back with your inner elbows facing your body and your elbows facing straight back away from the body. Keep your neck relaxed. Try not to shrug your shoulders up near your ears. Keep them kind of neutral. And then lift a little bit further away from your back. And here I want you to work on not just stretching through your chest, you should feel that, but also strengthening through your upper back. So you should feel those muscles around the shoulder blades working as you squeeze your arms back. I'm just gonna turn so you can kind of see this. Notice that I'm not rounding the shoulders down like this, keeping my chest open, shoulders pulled back, squeezing the arms away from the back. We're gonna do two more breaths here and continue to keep your hips engaged, pushing down through your feet, pushing the top of the head up, squeezing the arms further back. One more breath here. And then go ahead and release. Take the strap down to the floor. And we're gonna move into a warrior one lunge from here. So kind of like we did before, I'm gonna have you put just one block at the top of your mat right in the middle. Right foot is outside the block. Big step back with your left foot and I want you to point that foot out 45 degrees. So it's not facing straight forward, not directly to the outside, but somewhere in the middle, 45 degrees. Knee over the ankle on the front foot push into the outer edge of your back foot and then using the block I want you to let your hips kind of sink forward here working into your groin mobility so we should be feeling stretching through the groin here as we do this make sure your butt isn't poking out to the right keep your hips kind of squared between your feet as you exhale you can sink deeper into this as you inhale I want you to lift and maintain good form, maintain core engagement. So that means the muscles in your abs are active. You have awareness in the midsection of your body. 
All right, now that you've kind of adjusted to this, try squeezing your legs toward one another. So your right leg squeezes back, your front foot squeezes forward, and using that block as little or as much as you'd like to support your body weight. One more breath here. And then stay in this position, keep the block where it is, and straighten your right leg until you feel a stretch in the back of your right thigh. So this is a pyramid pose. Keep your chest pulling forward and up. Your goal here is to keep your back flat. So if you notice that you've straightened your leg a lot and your back has rounded in the process, go ahead and bend your knee a little bit more. So if you're a beginner, if you're really tight in your hips, you might only have to come right where I am right now to feel a stretch in the backs of your thighs. And if you're really flexible, you might have to straighten your leg all the way to feel the stretch. But wherever you are, make sure that you're keeping your back flat. We're gonna do two more breaths here. As you exhale, try to relax into this a little bit more. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Make sure your head is relaxed. Even your expression on your face is relaxed. All right, now let's go ahead and step your left foot up outside the block. I'm gonna have you sit your hips down a little bit here. Look forward and then inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Push your palms together. And then go ahead and release your palms, arms along your sides. And we'll switch sides. So now left leg, or sorry, left leg is forward and right leg is to the back. Again, point it out at a 45 degree angle. One other thing in this warrior one you wanna keep in mind, go ahead and take a look at my back foot here. This is what happens when the pose is incorrect. The foot caves in. So you wanna make sure that you're pushing into the outer edge of the back foot and the arch of the foot is lifted. And you can see a bit of a shadow between the arch of the foot and the ground. That's also gonna help you get more ankle mobility and that really releases a lot of tension on the knees, your feet, and your ankles. Knee is over the ankle and the front foot still. I'm using that block as much as I want. And then squeeze your legs toward one another as you sink into this. Again, I want to keep my chest lifted and your abs should be engaged. If your back is rounded, it's really tough for you to properly engage your core here. So try to pull your chest forward and up, get some height to this lunge. And again, continue to squeeze your legs toward one another. As you inhale, get taller, lengthen your body. And as you exhale, kind of increase that depth. Let your hips sink into it. One more breath here. And then go ahead and straighten your left leg until you feel that stretch. Pull your chest forward and up. So we're making sure that the back stays flat here and right? not rounding my back, not, arc, not rounding the back. You also don't wanna overly arch the back, right? I'm not arching my back and looking up. I'm trying to keep the back flat. Abs pull in tight. So it should feel like you're doing a plank here. You can kind of imagine what that plank position feels like. And as you exhale, working a little bit deeper into that stretch. If you hear my breathing, uh, the reason I'm doing that is to reinforce that you should be breathing too. It's not just because, um, I don't know what, what it would be because of, but I'm breathing to help reinforce your breathing. So make sure you're breathing slow and controlled. All right, and go ahead and step your right foot up on either side of the block now, both feet. Sink your hips down, pull your chest forward, sweep your arms up overhead, inhale. Press your palms together, and then release your arms along your sides. All right, go ahead and grab your strap. We're gonna do some shoulder work again. I'm gonna have you hold the strap with your feet uh, sorry, with your, uh, with your hands at about shoulder width distant. If you'd like a little bit of added stability through your hips, you can put that block between your thighs. From here, you're going to lift your arms straight overhead. And instead of just lifting your arms up, I want you to actually squeeze your arms back. So you should feel those muscles in your shoulder blades working that we did at the very beginning of the workout in child's pose. As you exhale, squeeze back further. And the other variation you can do here 
If you notice that it's kind of tough to squeeze your arms back or your shoulders are coming way up near your ears, bend your elbows. So your elbows come to shoulder level and then squeeze your arms back from there. So really pulling your shoulder blades together here in whatever position your arms are. Squeezing back. So you feel stretching through the chest, feel strengthening through your upper back. As you bent your arms before, maybe get them straight up now. As you exhale, squeeze back even more. Try not to arch your back too much or puff out your chest. That's going to uh, compensate for shoulder mobility. We want to work on the shoulder mobility directly and not arch the back. One more breath here. Squeeze back. All right, and then go ahead and release. Okay, we're gonna go into a warrior two from here. So one more lunge position. Right leg is forward, left leg is back. Pointed out about 85 degrees, so not quite 90 degrees, not quite facing directly to the outside, but turn it in just a little bit. Hips and shoulders square to the outside. Right knee over the ankle in your front foot. And if you want, you're welcome to use a block here initially to kind of get set. Push your back hip into your front hip. Make sure that you're leading with your hips here. Knee is over the ankle in the front foot and avoid po poking your butt out behind you. Keep your butt under your torso. Now from here, if you're ready for warrior two, extend your left arm forward, reach it up, reach it back, come into a full on warrior two. Butt stays under the torso. Again, this is important. Make sure that your butt isn't coming up behind you and try to keep your lower abdominal area in a straight line. By that, I mean make sure that your pubic bone isn't facing down. Squeeze your butt, keep your lower back flat. Shouldn't be any tension in the low back here. Arms are out in opposite directions, looking straight over your middle finger. If you need a little pause, come to the block, let your hips sink forward, and then come back into it. If you're tighter in your hips, you might be more in this position with your depth. Doesn't matter how far apart your legs are, as long as you're feeling that stretch through your groin, you're feeling strengthening for your hips, and maybe a little bit of opening through the chest as your arms open up. All right, go ahead and relax. And we're gonna pivot. Actually, let's just go ahead and switch sides. So step your left foot up, and then step your right leg back. We're gonna do this opposite side. Point your toes out, again, about 85 degrees, not quite 90, turn it in just a little bit. And just like we did with Warrior One. You wanna make sure that you're pushing into the outer edge of the back foot, and there's a little bit of an arch between the, or a little bit of a shadow between the arch of your foot and the ground. Knee is over the ankle and the front foot. Hips are under the shoulders, using the block initially to get set. So I'm making sure that my hips are pressing forward toward, toward my front knee. Tailbone reaches down here. So by that, I mean tighten your glutes and squeeze your abs. Lift your ribs away from your hips to get in the proper technique here. So we are building strength and endurance here as we work on our hip flexibility. So that's a good thing. We're not just stretching, we are strengthening too. And then arms come out in opposite directions. Look over your left middle finger. If you need a little break, bring your hands to the block and come right back when you're ready. Two more breaths here. Squeeze your legs in toward the middle. So that's something that we always wanna do in yoga is squeezing the legs in toward the middle. One more breath. All right, and then go ahead and straighten that leg. We're gonna step back up, back into a standing position, drop the hips, pull the chest forward, lift your arms overhead, palms pressed together, and release your hands down. Okay, here we're gonna move into our final couple of stretches. We're gonna go into a Thread the, thread the needle stretch, and then we're going to move into a pigeon. So take it back down into a child's pose. Knees wide, big toes touch. You should notice that this is a little bit easier than when we started. Walk your arms out in front of you. Relax your head down. And then you're gonna slide your right hand through your left knee and your left hand. Coming to the outside of your right shoulder, pressing the back of your right arm into the ground, and lightly pulling back toward the right. So as you do this, you should feel stretching through your right shoulder blade. 
Deep breaths. Try to keep your hips back, so make sure that your hips aren't coming way forward, and keep your shoulders pulled down away from the ears. Last breath. All right, go ahead and release. We're gonna switch sides, slide your left hand through your right hand and your right knee. Relax onto the outside of your left shoulder. Press the back of your left arm into the ground, and then lightly pull it back toward the left. Right arm is going to walk out in front of you if you want a little bit more of a shoulder stretch in your right side. So this is the little more active version. Or if you want, you can also bring that right hand kind of just in front of your face and lightly push into the ground for a deeper stretch through the left shoulder blade. Try to keep your hips back and try to keep continuous pressure here as you lightly press the back of the left arm into the ground and kind of pull it back toward the left. So you should feel stretching through your left shoulder blade. And as you do this, this is really nice because it releases tension in the shoulders and the neck. It's a great recovery stretch. You can use this if you have an upper body workout or if you're just sore through your shoulders. This is a really nice one to do. One more breath here. Go ahead and release. And now we're gonna move into a pigeon. So pigeon, if you haven't done this before, it is a lot of stretching through your hips. I'm gonna have you start on a block if you're new to this. So you will sit on this block with your right hip. So I'm sitting on the block with my right hip. My knee is coming to the outside and my inner right thigh is facing up. Depending on your tightness in your groin, or sorry, in your hips, your right heel is going to come closer to the block or it can be as far away as parallel uh, to, the top of the, to the top of the mat. And then from there, I want you to do your best to get your left leg back. So get it parallel to the side of the mat. Hug it over toward the right. Inner right thigh is still facing up here, sitting on that block for a little bit of support. That's going to allow your hips to relax. And then maybe bringing your hands out in front of you and kind of relaxing here. Now, initially, What's gonna happen is you're going to avoid putting your weight into your hips. So you can start by kind of putting the weight into the upper body, but I want you to start putting more of your body weight into your hips, and that's going to help open up your hips a lot more. So if you're just getting used to this, and it feels really tight in the hips, and you're feeling some opening, good. If you're noticing that your body is adjusting, I want you to start kind of putting the weight into your hips, so you can work on your hip flexibility a little bit more. As you're doing this, you're going to feel stretching through the outer right thigh and your glute. To make this a little more intense, you can take the block away entirely. Just make sure that you're not leaning over toward the right. You do wanna have, you kinda wanna have your body weight balanced as much as possible here. Uh, and it's not gonna be perfect at first, but as you do it, your body will open up. One more breath. All right, let's go ahead and get out of this. To do that, you're just gonna roll toward your right and come back to the center. All right, now moving to the other side, same thing. You're gonna sit on the block with your left hip now. So sitting on the block with the outside of the left hip, bring your left knee just outside the block and forward. And depending on your hip mobility, the left shin can be parallel to the top of the mat if you're really flexible, or closer in toward your groin if this is new for you. And if you have uh, sensitive knees here, just be really careful. And then crawl that right leg back as much as you can. You might start off in kind of a position like this where your knee is still bent, and that's normal, that's fine. As your body adjusts, and even as you hold this pose within a minute, you might be able to get that leg further back to the point where the top of that knee is facing down. And that's our eventual goal. And then as your body adjusts here, maybe we can bring the left foot further away from the groin. And I'm gonna rest my hands on the ground here. 
to work on kind of absorbing this stretch at first with my upper body. And then as I get more comfortable here, as my hips adjust, then I can kind of shift the weight into my hips and, uh, and, and make this more about my hips. And you might be already feeling this very intensely in the hips, and that's, that's good. That's what we want to feel. Our goal here is to get a moderately intense stretch through your outer hips and thighs. So we want to feel, I would say, an intensity of about a 4 to a 7. If it's too easy, turn it up a little bit by bringing your heel a little bit further away from the groin. You can also remove that block entirely from the equation. And if it's too intense, if it's at like a 9 or a 10, then use the modification. Bring your heel closer in towards your groin. Bring your hips a little bit higher off the ground. Two more breaths. And as you exhale, relaxing into it. Not fighting it, allowing your body to work into it. But being cautious. Don't just work your way as deep as you can and then hope it'll be okay. Be cautious, gently work your way into it. And then go ahead and roll to your left. Bring your legs back to the middle. You can finish in a cross leg position. You can go onto your back, whatever you want to do. And that is the end of our workout. So that was a beginner friendly uh, workout focused on hip mobility. We also got in some shoulder flexibility. So hopefully your shoulders are feeling a little bit looser as well. And uh, we did a lot of strength work. So um, flexibility is more than just passive stretching. Um, when you can start to incorporate strength into flexibility, that's when we really start to see uh, the benefits of um, noticeable benefits. So flexibility is good, but we want to add in strength to that, and that's what we did with this workout. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you're watching this from the members area, thank you for being part of the Manful Yoga community. I encourage you to leave a comment to inspire, to help inspire someone else to do this workout. When people see that there's a community behind this, and it's not just you by yourself following along to a video online, uh, it really does add a lot of motivation. So I encourage you to leave a comment, um, give your feedback on the workout, talk about you know, maybe a posture that you uh, tried and you thought it'd be too difficult, but then you could do it. So whatever you want to say about your experience with the workout, go ahead and leave a comment here. Um, and that's it. So guys, thanks for joining me for your workout today. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment here. I'll get back to it as soon as I can. And thanks again for being part of Manful Yoga. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that workout. Hope you learned something new. Uh, try to make these workouts very helpful in terms of technique, in terms of learning how to properly engage muscles and build strength with yoga. If you're looking for more workouts, I encourage you to check out the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure I have over a thousand. Uh, and if you want more, if you're looking for an organized program to get started, I highly recommend checking out the Manful Yoga members area. It's just $1 to get started with a seven day trial. So thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to like this video if you liked any of it. It's really helpful. And I hope to see you on future videos.